Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Ibishu Kovac. And with this mod, we have three versions, but we're going to start with the best version there is, the ZXI Special Edition, just so you can see what the heck is going on here. So basically, you get an Ibishu Kovac, then you get another Ibishu Kovac, and you slam them together at the rear end, and ta-da, you get a Kovac. And when I first saw the name of the vehicle, I thought it said Kov Kov. And that's going to be the official nickname because that is an adorable name. And the really crazy thing about this is it doesn't just look like two vehicles smashed together. It literally is. It has an engine in both the front and the rear of the vehicle. If I spin it around enough, you don't even know which is the front and the rear anymore. Although what you do know is it has been completely ruined. So we put it back over here. And before we can drive it, we're going to need to make some changes to the settings of the game because this vehicle is really weird in the way you have to control two engines at once. So first, we're going to go over to the options menu and head over to gameplay. We want to make sure the default gearbox behavior is set to realistic. Now normally you would just have it to arcade and then you would hit change modes and it would change to realistic, but that doesn't work for this vehicle. For this vehicle, it needs to be changed in the menu. Next up, you're going to want to go to the controls. And then you want to make sure you have the vehicle already spawned up so there'll be a vehicle specific tab that lists all the controls for the Cove Cove. And then what you need to do is you need to add at least two controls at a bare minimum. You need to add shift up and shift down because the two engines, they're controlled by the same gas pedal and the same brake pedal, but they have different buttons to shift with. So you need to have four buttons in total that are used just for shifting the two engines in this. And another one that's fun to have set up is the next steering mode. And I definitely suggest doing that because it does make some interesting things possible. So there's the Cove Cove. And we could drive it now, but there's one more thing that makes it just a little bit easier. So we go to Customize UI Apps, and we're going to add a new app, and it's called the Gears Second Gearbox. It comes with the vehicle, so it's not a separate mod you need to install or anything. And we're just going to set it down here right near my tachometer. And now we have two listings for what gear we're in. So now I know the gear of both the vehicle in the front and the vehicle in the rear. And one thing that's really nice is the vehicle in the rear has had its transmission completely reversed. Because if it had a normal transmission, it'd be going in reverse right now, and then it'd have to be going in reverse too, which it doesn't have. It has one reverse gear. This ain't no T-Series. So it's like, just for simplicity, the gearing on the rear vehicle matches the gearing on the front, so really you can just always remember shift them both at the same time, or shift them independently if you want to have it at different gear ratios to maybe slide it in interesting ways. I'll go more into that later. First, how about a very basic slide into the pole trying to split the car in half? Now, we cannot split the car in half. As cool as it would be, it doesn't happen. You know what might be interesting? I think even though the front has been ruined, the rear might still be able to drive along. So can we get it off of the pole? Yes, we can. And now we're just going to use the rear part of the vehicle for acceleration. Come on. I think the front tires are actually still spinning. Let's put that thing to neutral and go. Oh, it almost works, but not quite. We just can't get traction because the bottom part right there is stuck on the ground and it's just scraping too hard. Freshen it up and then we're going to take a look at the different steering modes. So we have two steering modes available. We have opposite and we have parallel. Opposite is what we were using earlier and you might not even noticed that the steering was a little bit wacky, but it is. So with the normal mode, aka opposite mode, you steer both the front and rear tires at the same time in opposite directions. Now this feels really bad for high speed stability because I am completely all over the place with this, but it's really good for low speed maneuvering, okay? Check out how tight this thing can do a 180 on this road. So we're just gonna do it very simple using just the front engine, and I'm gonna go just nice and easy with the accelerator, and that is how tight it can do a 180. So for comparison, let me get a regular Ibishu Kovet with the exact same trim configuration on it. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. You're gonna see just how much wider this thing takes the corner because it doesn't have what's basically extreme four wheel steering. Actually, let's move a little bit more forward before we do this. There we go. And then full steering lock and just gentle acceleration. And you can see we are going all the way into the dirt. That is a huge difference. It is crazy just how tight that thing can corner. If you have a slalom and you actually know what you're doing, it'll be amazing. Good luck knowing what you're doing when you're driving this thing though. Most of the time it just feels like uncontrollable chaos and I'm holding on for my dear life as I drive this thing. 
One really nice thing though is you can get into these really big slides and you think, oh, there's no way you can recover that. But it does, thanks to how aggressive the steering is. Like right there, there is no way a regular car could do something like that. It adjusted mid-slide so unnaturally. And it worked great, but we're stuck in the trees and though we have like tiniest scratch on the vehicle. All right, we'll pull this guy out of the trees and we'll do a little bit more driving with the opposite steering mode. And with this vehicle having an engine in both the front and the rear, it's got some serious get up and go, assuming you can shift correctly. The setup I have, I have to shift on the controller and on the keyboard at the same time, so it always takes me a second longer than it should to do the shifts properly, but we were going about 100 miles per hour, and then we were flying through the air, and the fun thing is, is when you're flying through the air and bouncing all over the place, it's really easy to forget which side of the vehicle is the front and which side of the vehicle is the rear. So if I'm not mistaken, we want to go into reverse to drive out of here. Yeah, so that's going in reverse, and in reverse we only have the one gear. It doesn't have like a truly symmetrical gearbox with five gears in reverse and five gears in forward. It has five in forward and one in reverse only. So there's definitely one direction that feels like you're driving forward and the other direction feels like you're driving backwards because of the asymmetrical gearbox. Uh, the front right axle is broken. This thing is not going to be able to steer very well anymore. And I've noticed just it's so hard to control normally. Once you start breaking axles and losing wheels, it just gets so much weirder control. So we're just going to go ahead and take a look at the damage and reset. And the really weird thing about this vehicle is it actually messes with your mind a little bit. Because steering is perfectly normal. You hit left to go left and right to go right. But you see a front of a vehicle looking at you, and when I see that, my brain says, oh, we need to go left to go right, because normally when you look at the front of a vehicle, that's what you gotta do because you're going in reverse, but that's not the case here. It's just messing with your mind just a little bit where you'll completely steer the wrong direction. You think, why did I do that? And the only conclusion I can come to is, I see the front of the vehicle and then monkey brain is enabled that just tells me to do the opposite steering, which is just wrong in the situation. Anyways, Back to the steering modes. Now we're going to take a look at parallel mode. So when you go to parallel mode, it steers in the same direction with both wheels, which means we have a vehicle that can strafe. This thing literally can drive sideways, although being on a cliff like this, not really the best way to properly demonstrate that. So I'm just going to do a real quick and lazy teleportation over to this road here and then make sure it's no damage. And now it is strafing time. And everything about this just looks so unnatural. Like we're driving back and forth and it doesn't look like it should do that. Now we're driving sideways. We are 100% strafing with the vehicle. Again, it does not look right. Everything about driving this car makes me think that does not look right. Even when it's not driving, it doesn't look right. So we pulled it into reverse to get out of there. We're gonna top out at like 40 miles per hour, but we're not really gonna be going that fast anyway. So that works fine. Plus, I'm sure eventually we'll run into a barrier, and when that happens, we can go back into going forward, like right now. That's what we need to do. We need to go ahead and swap it back. The big problem with the strafing mode is you literally can't do any sort of tight maneuver. You can only do these like wide sweeping maneuvers like you're seeing me do here. It is a huge disadvantage, but sometimes you get lined up perfect like this, and it looks amazing, except I gotta try to shift it. Oh, yeah, see, when you shift, it actually moves the vehicle, so that's an interesting idea there. What if you try to control the vehicle by shifting it to adjust how the power is being put down to make it asymmetrical and that'll cause it to steer? It's an idea. I don't know if it'll actually work, but it's an idea. So let's try it out. One is in second gear, the other is in first. And now it kind of wants to straighten out more, it feels like. It feels like it doesn't want to go as crooked as it did before with this setup. Although you can still get it going strafing pretty sideways if you want to. So third gear makes it where the power delivery is so asymmetrical. It feels like it's just kind of being overpowered by the rear. So that's not going to work. We kind of go into reverse again because we're going to crash into a wall. And then on reverse, we don't really have any option in the matter. So yeah, you could slightly adjust it by changing the gearing, but it's not really enough to actually steer. Oh, and since we're in the water, you can drown the engine, but I noticed it doesn't exactly work the way you'd expect it to. So easy enough to just dive into the water and have the engine drown, just like so. And we have actually drowned both of the engines right now, so we're gonna bring it back up to the land. And now I'm gonna show you why it doesn't really work right. So the engine on the right side, that thing should be drowning right now, but it's not, it still works perfectly fine. Now it's starting to drown. The problem is, is the engine in the left side is also starting to drown 
as well. So they don't seem to drown independent of each other, they just kind of both drown at the same time. But if you really wanted to, you could turn the engine off on one of them and then just rev it up. Eventually here, that engine dies. So then you just pull it out of the water and you'll have only one engine working if you really wanted to have it where one engine drowns and the other one doesn't. Oops, well, doesn't really matter if it's upside down or not, it's just to prove a point. See, that engine still works. The other one, it's dead. And we should be able to reverse out of this water with relative ease because we basically have four wheel drive. Although technically it's not because if you have two separate engines doing it, wouldn't that just be you have two two wheel drives? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, I wanna do something dumb here. We're gonna put one in forward and one in reverse and we're gonna see what happens when we accelerate. So nothing happens now, but if I drop the clutch on it, then look at that, it does some good burnouts. If you brought this to a burnout competition, it would win because it can also do this. So if you spin it like this, it does a beautiful Beyblade maneuver and burnouts at the same time. How could this not win the competition? The burnout competition I know of, because it's really cool to see something so ridiculous. And that's with the two tires pulling the vehicle apart. If you do it the opposite where they push at each other, so now it's reverse in the front and forward in the rear, you'll notice it's pretty much the same deal. It doesn't change how it spins, it spins just as fast, it does great burnouts either way, so it's really a versatile vehicle if you just want to do some really nasty looking burnout spinning crazy maneuvers. And since we're doing all this kind of stuff, how about I show you what happens when you do the same kind of thing with the steering in opposite mode. So again, the two tires are pushing towards each other, which is the more interesting way of doing things here because it gives you this weird crap walking vehicle that can very, very slowly drive down the road at apparently one mile per hour. So I don't even know which is the front and the rear of the vehicle in this situation. That's the funny thing. The only way to figure out is look at the speedometer and figure out which one it's reading off of because you can tell if one's reading zero, well obviously it's the one that's going in reverse. So now let's go ahead and do the opposite thing. So now we have the front and forward and the rear and reverse. So it's pulling the vehicle apart. And this one just kind of feels like a worse version of what we were just doing, unfortunately, because it seems like just you'll have one side kind of overpower the other one and then it drives mostly normal. So you see the vehicle part in the front from what we're seeing, that one is just pulling along the rear and the rear is trying to pull in the other direction, but it's not happening. I think it's just because first gear and reverse gear have different gear ratios. So one of them is just going to have more grunt and it's able to pull it along where the other one just slides. Let's do a little maneuver here. We're going to do a 180 and then if I knew what gear to be in and stuff, I could have kept accelerating, but I have no idea what's going on with what gear and such. So we'll just crash into some trees here and I mean, we just gradually wreck this thing up. We're going to do a bunch of little boops and bashes and see how well it holds up. So we'll get it up to speed. We don't have to go that fast. It's a Covet after all. It has a nice little damage to the door. Should still drive decent enough, so into the pole. And that looks pretty damaged, just as you'd expect. How is steering though? It's not great. Steering is kind of messed up, so it's just going to go wherever it wants to go, which happens to be into the sand. And it's probably just going to get stuck in the sand somewhere. Just let it crash into the rocks. Yeah, it's going to get stuck on these rocks. So we'll say, good job, Cove Cove. You did well. There's the look at the damage for everybody who is interested in seeing that. And then we'll go ahead and reset it. Now we're going to try to do a proper 180 maneuver. So we're going to go in reverse, get it as fast as it can go, and then whip it around, go to forward, and that was actually surprisingly good. You can whip it around. You just have to really think about what buttons to hit when you switch gears because it's really confusing to remember. Am I going in forward or reverse? Do I need to switch to forward or reverse? I don't know what the heck is going on. We're going to change gears and hope it works is usually my strategy when that kind of situation happens. Oh, well, there's some trees and stuff. I was just driving all over the place there, not really paying attention to where I was going. So let's see, how well does it drive in this situation? The answer is not too well. It's just kind of dragging the rear end and the rear end is dragging me down. Yeah, I can't really control it too well here. It's just sliding all over the place. So let's hit a jump. I see a beautiful jump. Let's kind of hit it. I mean, I technically hit it, but not the way you would normally hit a jump. So I think that's going to do it for this map. Now I want to take it to a proper racetrack and actually try to drive it fast, which I know is going to go terribly, but I got to give it a shot. 
And as you saw at the start, there are three different configurations for this, but they're based on the versions that already exist for the Covet. So there's really not much extra to say about it. This is just the DXI Cove Cove. This is the LXI Cove Cove. And then we got the ZXI Cove Cove because I got to go fast. So let's see how big of a disaster this ends up being. And one thing you probably noticed by now is the gas gauge doesn't work. Don't care. The vehicle works. That's all that matters to me. It really does work great if you just want to slide around the corners like that. In fact, this might be one of the few vehicles ever where it's actually faster to slide around the corners than drive through them properly because the rear steer is so aggressive. You just can't go through them without sliding because of that. I'm actually kind of surprised too, you've never seen a drift car that really makes use of rear steering to do some nonsensical things. Oh, uh, this is going to be hard. Tight corner. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, you guys probably don't know what just happened there. So I was trying to steer to the left, but then the engine was bogging down because I was in third gear. So I had to take my hand off of the steering wheel to shift down. And then the vehicle just goes in a straight line into the dirt because I got no hands on the steering. Oh man, do not try to downshift in the corner unless you absolutely have to. Like right now where we're barely moving at all. So we have to downshift here and then it's once again working. So that's just yet another thing we got to watch out for when we drive this vehicle. Also, it does have an interior camera and it works perfectly fine, but only for going forward. There is none for going in reverse, which I thought would be a little fun addition that shouldn't be too difficult to implement if they wanted to. And we're going almost 150 miles per hour through here. And again, look how easy it just kind of slides and glides. It slides and glides so easily at these ridiculous angles until weird steering happens and I kind of freak out and I bump into the wall a little bit. And that's actually kind of ruined things, I feel like. I think one of the suspensions got broken when we bumped that wall and now we can't really go forward with any sort of control. How about reverse though? I don't really know if that makes any sense, but reverse seems decently controllable. We also aren't going that fast. So here we go. We're going to do the difficult maneuver, the 180 and then shifting. Yes. See, the hard part is I also don't have steering as I shift. So when I'm doing the 180, there's just the second where it's going perfectly straight and you have to time it so right and it's very difficult to do. And yeah, it does not want to go forward good. So we're going to go ahead and say we're done here. Now let's head to Leap of Death. And for Leap of Death, you already know which version we're going to use. We got to use the ZXI once more. That's my version, man. The ZXI or bust. And this thing should be able to go pretty fast through here. Yeah, we're up to about 70 miles per hour. We could have went a little bit faster if I shifted one more time probably, but it's hard to shift. I'd rather take the easy one to go. And you can see just how cleanly assembled this thing is. Look at that. It looks like it's all one solid piece on the underside of the vehicle, not just some tack welded together nonsense. Amazing. Anyways, let it fall. Which is the front, which is the rear? I don't even know anymore, but it's going to get crunched either way. Yep, both sides have been crunched pretty equally, actually. How nice that the vehicle is staying symmetrical, even on the leap of death run. Yeah, this is definitely one of the most symmetrical vehicles I've ever seen. It's not perfectly symmetrical because they're both left-hand drive. Now, if one was left-hand drive and one was right-hand drive, it really would be perfectly symmetrical. Anyways, let it fall into the water and we'll have one final look at the damage, which looks just like a mangled mess of metal like it always does for Leap of Death. And I think it might also be fun to see what happens when we bring this guy to Brutal Slope. So let's go ahead and do just that. And normally I would back up the pickup truck from here, but you know what? Cove Cove is so good at going in reverse, we're going to do it with Cove Cove. So we're going in reverse, then we swap to forward, and I have no idea if we need to steer left or right, but it worked out. Go nice and easy, nice and easy, and then floor it. Oh, we got to shift right now. Bouncing off the rev limiter already going through all these gears. It's only a five speed. So we're done shifting now. And I can just worry about trying to keep it straight, which is, again, easier and harder than you'd expect. We can get super sideways in recover, but it's also very, very easy to accidentally get super sideways. So you just got to have a very nice touch on this vehicle and you'll do fine. So we're going to get to the wall about 200 miles per hour. We're getting the slow motion on. And then with this kind of speed, you always want to take the camera off of the car so it doesn't glitch out. Camera is positioned good. And then let the crash commence. Yeah, we have now made the two fronts of the Cove Cove kiss together as they have always wanted to do. That's why it does those spinning donuts because the fronts are trying to get to each other like a dog trying to bite its tail. 
It's finally accomplished his dream though. So that's a great place to end this video. So until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how weirdly this thing drives. So do the right thing and I'll see you next time. Ooh.